Okay, so we're uh, just coming up to the cruise now. Uh, unfortunately, probably to see, I think it just kind of gave up um, and got a bit confused as to what I was doing with the frequencies. Uh, but it's not a good bad thing because then it means actually what I can do is show you how the, um, the VNAV works. Um, but just as we're coming up to cruise, basically what we need to do is, um, if we're running on schedule, which we basically are, um, we want to maintain a cruise speed of 20 knots below um, the VMAX. Um, which I think in our case is about 250, so we'll go up to about 230. And once we hit the, hit the cruise, we'll bring the conditions back to 850 for a nice, um, quiet cruise. Um, well, I said had come off, had switched off, off everything, but it's now come back on again. So I'll put, put it back on. Just because I think we're going through a bit of a thunderstorm at the moment. And uh, heat up that windshield as well. Okay, uh, so we'll bring that condition lever back to 850. And um, we'll just watch the speed basically. And uh, switch it off when we get to 2000. But let's set up the VNAV. Um, but if you look at the flight plan, and uh, look for a good spot to go down to. So we go for EH609, um, which will be. Uh, yeah, one of the runway vectors, and that's 2,000 feet. So we'll uh, we'll go for that on the VNAV. Just number nine, and then this bus, this this section is basically if you want to get to not 2,000 prior to that point, which we don't. We want to be exactly at 2,000 at the point. 1,800 is fine, and uh, so we've got just over just under 100 nautical miles before we get to um, that VNAV point. Um, so we're we'll just have another look at that speed. We're still kind of creeping up, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, so basically we're set up for the cruise now, and um, I'll... Uh, oh, another point I wanted to make um, was it's not in the checklist, but you can switch, just before takeoff, you can switch the flight taxi to flight. Um, however, once you set up takeoff power, it automatically switches over to flight. So it's completely up to you whether you set that or not. Uh, but whilst you're on the cruise, you can just be keeping an eye on, um, obviously, your speed. Um, you should really be switching to 1 to 1.5 every now and again, um, just in case you've had a radio failure. Um, and also, um, you want to check your fuel every 20 minutes or so. So you can check it against Waypoint if you use PFPX. Um, you can have a look at the expected fuel at that point and, and check it against the fuel that you have on board. Um, and uh, work like that. But otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll see you when we get a bit closer to descent. Alright, so we've just uh, gone past Redfoe and heading on to the top of descent now. Um, so we can start prepping for descent. Um, the first thing we can do is set the um, decision height for a Category 2 um, approach with an aircraft category of B. Um, so the decision, well, we can leave the MDA on 1000 um, and then adjust the decision height uh, to 791. Just zoom in a little bit. The writing's a little bit difficult to read. Oops. There we go. Uh, we can set the. Um, well, we could set the. Uh, Arrival Q&H on the standby instruments, but we're not going to. Um, that's, it's fine as it is. Um, transition altitude uh, was uh, 3,000, so just to bear that in mind. Um, the fuel is appropriate to uh, where we are on the flight plan. And the landing uh, weight we'll be using is 57,000 uh, pounds. We're almost down to 53, but uh, we'll use the next one up. Uh, the VREF um, is what we put in the solid. Um, speed bug, and uh, that is one two one for fifty seven thousand pounds and flat fifteen. And then the uh, the V climb um, was the same, so it's one four eight. We've already set the ele aerodrome elevation. Pressurization, uh, and we'll sort out the rest once we've gone past top of descent, but because um, we're coming up very close, uh, so we'll just wait 
go onto the VNAV page and see how far we are. So yep, so we can click, click the VNAV button. Uh, actually, we just need to set the altitude to 2000. And then we can hit the VNAV button, otherwise it won't let us. Very sensitive. Hit the VNAV button and then just wait. And there it goes. So we want to be maintaining about 230 knots as we descend. So we just adjust the speed, the, uh, the prop accordingly. The power accordingly, not the prop. <laughs> Getting everything mixed up. So we can pretty much bring it down to flight idle. Flight idle isn't complete engine idle. Um, from what I gather, flight idle, uh, it, the way it's different is because if you completely idle the prop, um, because it's got such big prop blades, um, when it's completely idle, it actually adds quite a lot of drag on, um, which is dangerous when, particularly when you're quite low, um, which is why you don't completely idle up the throttle when you're um, when you're flaring. Um, and once you actually hit the ground, when you completely idle, that drag is is why you don't really need to use reverse thrust it's enough to um, to slow the aircraft down. But um, we can carry on with our um, with our uh, descent um, flow. So we can set the radio aids. Um, so we need to set uh, 110.55 is the ILS frequency. Uh, and then we can set the course. To do the course, um, you hold down the format button, which is just there, and then you can adjust the course. And the course is uh, 059. Actually, I think it's just hidden. Yeah, that's the course there. Zero five nine. I've gone too far. There we go. And then we can hit the format button again just to get rid of it. You check your missed approach procedure and taxi procedure. Uh, so the taxi procedure is we'll be um, vacating left and then it should be kind of bravo all the way around um, and then the missed approach let's have a look just get to the right chart and um, the ground altitude as well, well we'll need to check we'll just bring that in the meantime whilst we'll find that chart we'll just bring the speed up a little bit because we're going a little bit slow Okay, so the uh, go-around procedure is uh, to maintain uh, runway heading. And then uh, to carry on to 2,000 feet. But fingers crossed we won't have to use that. Um, so right, so the, then the checklist, uh, pressurization we've set, GPS, GPWS will adjust to 15, uh, safe transition altitudes we've reviewed, and the briefing, well I've pretty much talked through the, the approach, so I think we're both quite happy. And then we'll complete the approach checklist uh, around about kind of 12,000 feet-ish, just as we uh, get close to 10,000. I'll just hit on the out select and just make sure we don't drop below 2,000 feet when we get there. I don't, I can't remember whether VNAV um, levels you off or not, but I'll do the out select just uh, just to be safe. Monitor vertical speed. <laughs> There's that aircraft ahead of us. If you notice, TCAS is made, it is in, well, it's, it's in, it was in the green, but now it's saying we should descend a bit quicker, but uh, we're okay. You can see that aircraft is up there. Clear of conflict. Just uh, increase the... There we go. That's radar. Uh, just to explain why the choice of 15 degree flap. Um, as the checklist explains, basically you don't really want to be using 35 because it's extra fuel consumption and a bit more cumbersome, um, particularly if you need to kind of go around or you need that extra bit of manoeuvrability at the last minute. 
Um, so basically you don't want to use it unless you're landing uh, on a particularly short runway. So less than 1800 feet really. But we're getting close to 10,000 feet. Um, so what we need to do is make sure that um, below 10,000 feet the landing lights are obviously on and we can switch the passenger, light, passenger signs on now. Um, and, uh, and then we'll go through the approach flow once we've, we've crossed that 10,000 feet marker. Um, but once we've gone down below 10,000 feet, we want to look out for 3,000 feet because that's our transition altitude. And we'll need to set it to the local uh, QNH. But at Sugol, we need to be above 10,000, which we're going to be maintaining. So obviously, you just need to keep an eye on uh, altitude restrictions when you're flying into an airport. Uh, but we won't be getting any ATC because, like I said, uh, pro ATC has kind of given up on us, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so that might be troublesome if there's an aircraft for final. Um, because what Pro ATC um, does is obviously um, kind of fits us in nicely on the approach and also it means that no aircraft go onto the runway when we're, we're landing so apologies if anything like that happens in, in advance but um, like I said it's a bit temperamental with the Majestic unfortunately because it's not synced in with the, uh, the comms panel um, but sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and unfortunately this time it didn't We're coming up to uh, 10,000 now. Um, so what we can do in kind of anticipation is uh, get the pumps on. And uh, get the auto feather on as well. We've got the passenger signs on and uh, hopefully the cabin's secure. And as soon as we cross that 10,000 feet, which we're basically there now, we can switch on the, uh, the landing lights. probably noticed when I took off I, I forgot to put the landing lights on um, which uh, obviously is a bit, of a bit of a mistake but like I said it, it's quite quite difficult to fly um, with uh, with one person so hopefully if I get uh, FS to crew then uh, that'll kind of decrease my workload a little bit and I'll be able to <laughs> do everything without forgetting things um, yeah so uh, the approach checklist altimeters will set when we're below 3000 fuel pumps are on standby hyd uh, hydraulic and ptu control pumps are on passenger signs are on cabin is secure but if i had switched on the landing lights it would have um, given a few of the kind of announcements which uh, had a little bit of immersion so i apologize apologize for that Okay, now that we're about 10 nautical miles out, we want to bring that speed down slowly. So if we bring that back to flight idle. And uh, once we're below 200 knots, we'll get flap uh, 5 down. So that's 10 nautical miles from uh, the uh, the ILS knot, <laughs> not EHAM. Uh, otherwise we'd be a little bit high. Uh, yeah, so try and bring it right down to flight idle. Unfortunately, there's no um, speed brakes in the Dash 8, but uh, it's uh, with the... Uh, throttle right down to flight idle, it can um, produce quite a lot of drag, so that's usually enough to slow you down. And there we go, there's 200, so we'll put down uh, flaps 5. 200 is the maximum uh, flap re uh, retraction speed. We're approaching um, the transition altitude, so we'll get ready to switch it to 1014 in a minute. And what we can do now is switch over to heading mode, change the nav source to ILS, and then um, wait for that localizer to come on. And we'll get the approach approach button. So actually we can bring it up to um, 170, we've gone a little bit slow. We'll just maintain that vertical speed of um, about 1300. Let's make sure we're below the glide slope. So 
So it says about 20, 28% should maintain us about one, uh, 170, so we're a little bit below that, so we we'll actually need to increase it a little bit higher. Localizer's live. I thought there was a call out, but uh, apparently not. And uh, the glide, glide slope is alive, uh, so gear down. Flaps 15. Condition levers to max. Bleeds to minimum. And we can do the landing checklist. So landing gears down three green, condition levers max, bleeds are minimum, and flaps uh, we can now well they are on there uh, on fifteen, so that's uh, that's the perfect setting. And if we now decrease the V ref, um, well the V approach is about uh, what seven additional knots, um, so about 128. That little noise is if you go below the flight idle. But I'll take manual control now. And there's 128, so we'll try and maintain that. One thousand. So we're a little bit low, so I'll just bring that up a bit. Light slow. And that's uh, confirming. Light slow. Confirming the fact we are a bit low. Light slow. But that should maintain us now. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Light slope's Light coming slow. down a little bit now. So we'll just kind of anticipate it a little bit by letting the nose drop ever so slightly. Light slow. Traffic. 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 So like I said, there might traffic. be a bit of traffic in the way, unfortunately. But uh, we won't know really until we're right down. So a little bit left. Oh, a little bit right, sorry. So we'll just bring that left. And uh, we're looking good on the glide slope now. Slow. Where we were. <laughs> Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Speed's dropping a little bit, and we're below the glide slope, so um, just maintain a bit of altitude. Flare, and we're down. So complete idle. Make sure that the spoilers illuminate, which they do, and then just kind of slowly introduce some brake. And then at uh, around about 60 knots, we engage the control lock. There we go, at 60. Engage control lock, and then we'll take this next left. We'll start the uh, chronometer and just time uh, a couple of minutes and see if we can switch off engine number one. But otherwise, we can switch off the uh, landing lights, switch the uh, collision lights to red, flaps up to zero, uh, put on the back in bus tie. Uh, switch over to taxi on the spoilers, 
Uh, make sure the ice protection's off, which I think it all is. I'll turn off the uh, pedostatics. Uh, the ore damper can come off now as well. And the weather radar to standby. Uh, I'll just make sure, I'll just remind myself which uh, gate we're on. Gate D24. Because um, uh, Fly B are on D and H, I believe. So D24. Uh, I will request follow me. I think I know roughly where it is, um, but it'll be nice to have a little follow me car. Why not? It's there. Um, but, but in the meantime, I'll just kind of be slowly making my way down Bravo. Turn off that caution light. It looks like we're coming up to two minutes now. Um, so what you can do is uh, just flick. Once it does that, it should come up to two minutes. Bring that condition lever down. Okay. And then uh, wait for an additional 30 seconds before switching completely off. Follow me is not moving, which isn't very helpful. <laughs> right, there we go, he's going up. So yeah, it's just a fuel saving measure. I didn't actually notice, um, I have flown with Flybe before, and I've not actually noticed them do this before. But I did watch a video and they do do it, so uh, it is legitimate. So there's 30 seconds, and fuel off. Obviously, it's a little bit slower to kind of get going with one engine, particularly with the control lock on. But uh, you do get there. If this van would get out of the way, <laughs> well, he's going to get blended up. But otherwise, a bit about uh, Amsterdam. So, this is again Aerosoft scenery. Uh, I do like the Aerosoft scenery. It's quite old now, though, actually, it's been available since 2010. Um, although, Aerosoft are currently work on, working on um, a Skipper Extended Edition, which should be out fairly soon, if not this year, then next year. Um, but in terms of the airport itself, it opened um, as an airbase, actually, in uh, 16th, of, 16th of September 20, uh, 16th of September 1916, so obviously, it's very old. Um, as a military base, taking its name from, from the uh, former nearby fortification named Fort Schiphol. Uh, since then, it's developed into, a main, into the main international airport of the Netherlands, located about five nautical miles um, south of Amsterdam. Uh, it's fifth biggest, uh, fifth busiest airport in Europe in terms of uh, passengers, with 52.5 million passengers passing through in 2013. Took that a bit fast. A bit of fun for passengers. Um, the airport's built um, as one large uh, terminal, which you'll know if you've been there. It's, got, it's called a single terminal concept, and it's divided into um, three larger departure halls. Um, and having been there, it is huge. I mean, everything's through these little travelators, and um, it takes a long time to get anywhere. So if you're having a connection, it can be a bit of a problem. Um, but around the terminal building are six additional runways, um, with 18 right, 36 left being considerably further away um, than the rest and it requires kind of a 15 minute taxi. So yeah, it's a very large airport and uh, some nice scenery to go with it. Um, though unfortunately I don't think these, jet well, these jetways wouldn't be used really anyway with uh, a Dash 8. But um, let me see if I finally can get Macarena to work. I don't think it will. Something a little bit skewed. Not bad, but uh, I don't think that's good enough. Right, so the shutdown checklist, uh, we'll set the brakes. Uh, fuel pumps all going to be switched off now. Um, as can the hydraulic pumps and the auto feather. Uh, power, uh, sorry, the condition levers can, the other condition lever can be brought to start further now. Switch on back to fuel off. Uh, we'll wait a, uh, another 30 seconds before um, we completely switch it off. 
Nose wheel steering, we can turn off now. Uh, the radar can be completely switched off now. Uh, transponder to standby. Engine bleeds uh, off. And then turn on the GPU before we completely switch off the uh, the engine. So there we go, GPU request, turn on the uh, external power, leave at the top. And then uh, once that's going, we can uh, turn off the engine and get the passengers off. There we go. So uh, bring off the condition lever and turn off the uh, passenger seatbelt signs. Well, once again, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like and share button. Uh, I really would appreciate it if you can share it with as many people as possible. Um, if you'd like to watch more, then please do subscribe. I'm trying to get as many videos out as possible. Um, there's the odd gap when I'm busy, but um, I do enjoy doing all this kind of stuff, so I'll continue and try and get some more out. Um, once again, uh, if you uh, would like to follow me on Twitch, please do so, but um, my internet won't be fast enough until September to do it. Uh, I'm, I'm open to suggestions, questions and tips, so do add anything in the comment section. Obviously, I haven't been perfect, um, although this was a tutorial. There was the odd thing I've uh, missed here and there, but I've tried to identify if I've missed anything, and um, if you've noticed something which I haven't corrected, then please do add anything in the comments. Um, if you'd like up-to-date information on my streams and videos, then please do follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, the links are in the description below. But otherwise, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.